Hey guys, welcome back to the Joe Jaguar Show one more time. I, by fluke, found something very interesting. It's something that uh, in Canada is pretty hard to find. Now, there are a couple name brands that you only see once or twice for sale a year. Now, I know my friends there in the US, you guys have 10 times the population. So which means let's say 10 times the people in this hobby and you probably have more manufacturing there and um, you can probably find this stuff 10 times faster. I'm gonna give you a quick peek. Yes, I'm gonna show you this guy. You don't see these things too often. Even probably in the, the US, uh, probably 80% of the people when they see stuff like this, that's like way beyond my price range or budget and uh, they don't get it for that reason. But anyway, let's get to it. Actually guys, one more thing I did want to say. So for you guys that know my channel, have been following me for a while, you know I got a Takahashi 150B refractor. Now I did just put it up for sale and the reason is not because I don't like it. I'm using it much. I'm using it once or twice a year and that's it. Why? The Takahashi six inch by itself, just the OTA is about 35 pounds. By the time you add the heavy duty rings, the bar, you know, the diagonal, the accessories that I have, which is just the Vixen bar, not the Las Mandy's bar and stuff like that. It's approaching 38, 39 pounds. That is heavy for a six inch. Now, just to compare, you guys know I also had an Evo Star six inch uh, F8 refract refractor. The Evo Star is an ED doublet, and I believe that one was about 24 pounds. That's big difference in weight. Now, that doesn't sound heavy. That's not what a telescope is. You have to kind of mount it on the thing, then you have to try to lock it in place. So, 39 pounds is extremely heavy. Because, and I did say on that ad that I may think about a trade for something like maybe, uh, I don't know, like, if I could ever find an FS-152, because I think that's 26 pounds, or if I find like 140 millimeter APM, uh, just released 140, that's F7, doublet with a 53 lens. So I'm thinking somewhere like that, a 140. I can go up to 150 as well, if it's a kind of like a lightweight or regular size, but at 39 pounds, it's just too heavy. The other reason why, I put it up for sale is that as you guys know it's a triplet. Triplets take a lot longer to cool down compared to a doublet. Triplets are really made for the astrophotographers and imagers where I'm not. I'm 95% visual and then just 5% uh, cell phone imaging or smartphone imaging. Uh, this guy here comes extremely close but will this be what I'm looking for? Or do I want something just a smidgen more bigger? Only time will tell. Okay, before I show you the telescope, okay, don't mind the CG4. I am not gonna use it on a CG4. But when I test it, I will use it on the EQ6. Guys, so here we go. We have a Takahashi FS. Uh, it's a older model. The model uh, probably can go as far back as 20 years, but maybe as early as like uh, 10, 12 years ago, they stopped making it roughly. Um, but anyway, it's a 128 uh, millimeter. Where is it? I'll show it to you. So it's 128 millimeter. The focal length is 1,040. And uh, there we go. Now this one is the upgraded one with a dual speed focuser, so there is the coarse focuser and the uh, dual speed focuser. Now, like my 120 I had at times, it doesn't feel like, and this is not tight at all, it's loose. It still has a lot of friction on this guy. So even though this guy feels nice and smooth, this guy here is just not as smooth as like a moonlight or a feather touch. Those are not the original rings. I have the cradle for it, but the cradle, I'll have to customize it to fit on like, uh, you know, the EQ6 or the EQ5 or, you know, that type of thing. So the cradle makes it a little bit more harder to uh, fit. But anyway, I just saw this guy on the used markets 
Um, now, I'm not going to say that I got an extremely great deal for this. For this. As you guys might know, um, in the used market, in the US, you can find these much faster than, of course, in Canada. But in the used market, and I think in US funds, you could probably find it for about $3,000. Uh, if you convert it over to its current um, exchange rate right now, that's about 4,000 Canadian. Um, now this guy did send it to Takahashi to get the lens cleaned up on the front and to install the dual speed from the single speed that it normally comes from. And those two things were about a thousand bucks Canadian. So um, anyway, so I, I did get a, an okay price for it, but I don't think it was a spectacular price. But the thing is, because we do not see these guys that often in Canada, it is what it is. You either get it, or you might wait another 10 years to see one for sale. You know, so this is the five inch, which compared to my TOA is one inch smaller. Uh, because it's a doublet, it's a bit long, not super long, but this is like an F8.1. So if you guys ever use those Acromats, the five, five inch F8, it's very similar in size to that. Okay, weight wise, this bare bones OTA is about 15, 16 pounds. Now again, this isn't the original uh, rings, but I already had these rings and it fits it. A millimeter difference. The only difference was the thumb screw that normally comes here was just going a millimeter into it uh, because it's not closing all the way. So I just put a couple of bolts, uh, but it does fit for now. Uh, but anyway, so it's not too heavy. So with that on and the diagonal as well, the two inch, inch and a quarter adapter, the two rings, the uh, 11 inch Vixen bar, it's 19 pounds. Uh, that's about, I say most Acromats, five inch F8 Acromats are about that weight anyway. So this is a doublet. It is using a fluorite lens in the front because that's what it means. The fluorite is on the front. I just saw this. I figure I better pick it up because it's just extremely rare. Now, this is way, way lighter than my TOA, six inch. But the question is, will this suffice? I mean, weight wise is fine too. I was really thinking in something like, you know, 140 millimeter F7 in a doublet if it was a 53 like the APM might suit me but this could suit me as well too but anyway that's what this is guys uh, hopefully you guys uh, like that it's a beautiful scope let's take a look at the lens anyway so let's see if I can without the glare interfering so there's the lens looks really good there's a couple little spots of dust on it but that's gonna happen anytime you use optics and you take out the cover for it type of thing so that's normal I'm not gonna worry about it so the question is uh, is 128 millimeter all that I need is a 5 inch and you know I've said that I've always said that before too like I think where the sweet spot is um, is a 5 uh, inch is I've said it hundreds of times on the channel. Four is good. Six sometimes is extremely heavy, uh, depending which six you're talking about. But most six inches are becoming kind of heavy for a lot of people. So five might be the perfect balance, but for the craziness of me, I would before I found this guy, I was thinking at 140. So I don't go too small of a refractor because I still like a large refractor. So I'm kind of thinking, I have to see how I feel. Is a 128 good enough or do I need to go, you know, or find an FS 152? Because that's only about 26 pounds from what I read. And that is not too bad. That's about your average uh, six inch F8 Acromat or a six, six inch uh, ED uh, doublet is around that size. So that might, is also better than me than 39 pounds. But will this do? Uh, in you know for the long haul or do I need just a slight more aperture on a refractor now obviously the, they don't make an FS or a Takahashi doesn't make a 140 uh, doublet or anything like that that would be amazing if they did 
Uh, but uh, in again, we're gonna see what happens because who knows with me sometimes. Like, comment, and subscribe. And my long time uh, subscribers appreciate it. If you guys know anybody else getting into the hobby, share my link with them or my channel. If you guys are on the forums and maybe somebody's asked about this, you can share the link with them and say, here's a link of this scope or that scope or this product if you'd like to know. Also, I do have a members videos now. I got about six or seven members video. I'm putting one video a month for the members and I'm also putting your name in the description as a thanks. So one coffee, one time a month uh, to watch those special videos that nobody else will see or it's not on the regular format of the channel. But for you guys that can't afford it or don't want to, that's okay. I probably have close to 200 videos as of this video. So there's still lots of videos that I'm sure you guys will like. Anyway, why not you, why not me?